Hey, what's up? It's me. Obviously, who else would be posting videos on my channel? <laughs> and today we're just going to do some dailies. We're just going to play Neopets because I feel like it's been a while since we've done that. I wanted to, you know, take a look at my pets. Some things have changed. I have some plans. I have some pets that I might be moving out. So, you know, gang's all here. Usual gang is all here, but some things might be changing soon-ish. First and foremost, I have... This is so funny, but I've become obsessed with the idea of having a Moroccan Gillert. And it's just funny that that would happen to me directly after the whole fairy festival, too many fountain fairy quests thing would happen because I got a good amount of those and I used them all on just trade fodder because I didn't have any pets in mind at the time. And I swear to God, as soon as that ended, I was like, wait, I really want a Moroccan Gillert. And it just so happens that because I'm like the most hated person in the world, I guess, according to the universe, the Moroccan paintbrush is one of the only ones that hasn't deflated yet. In fact, it just keeps going up. And I think right now it's about 9 million. <laughs> Whereas it really seems like every other paintbrush, the Halloween paintbrush, the pastel paintbrush, the toy paintbrush, the candy paintbrush, the stealth paintbrush, the desert paintbrush, like almost every other paintbrush, the fairy paintbrush, <laughs> like all the ones that used to be so expensive have gone drastically down. Like they have skyrocketed. Actually, I think to skyrocket, it means you're going up to the sky in a rocket. So what's the opposite of that? They have, what's like the thing that drills down into the ground? Is that, does that have a name? It's like a drill that goes into the ground. It has ground drilled. What? Shut up, Amanda, just stop. Okay, you're done. You're done. You get the picture. All of those have gone down. The Moroccan paintbrush is holding steady at like 9 million Neo points. So that's great, isn't it? Could really use a fountain fairy quest right about now, but unfortunately I just keep not getting them in my fortune cookies, my fairy quest fortune cookies. So we'll see if we get one today. I already have a pet that I made that I want as my Moroccan Gillard. So I would love to be able to paint him because I feel like I'm gonna be really picky about the name. But if I find one through like the trade circuit, that is a great name. I'll go after that one too, because you know, I don't want just any Moroccan Gellert. I really want him to be a permie. So we'll see what we can do with that. I just love Gellerts. They're probably my favorite. Loops and Gellerts. I can't choose between the two. That's like such a furry indicator, isn't it? <laughs> if your favorite Neopets are like the wolves and like the other wolf, I don't know why I keep like outing myself. Anyway, so I have to like pick some pets to move around since like I want a new pet. And by the way, I did move some pets out from the last time that I showed you all my pets, like quite a bit actually. So we got Velvet here. You remember Velvet doing great, looking better than ever. I love her. But I also have a new walkie who may or may not be a vampire. Who else is new? Anybody? Look at Pickle. He's got his new eyes. He's got his floppy hat. And then I got him the wings. He's so precious to me. My baby. And then there's Croakling in his little basket. It reminds me of that movie. Is this a mainstream movie? What's it called? It's about a little puppy that goes in a basket and like goes to Australia or something. Or maybe he's already in Australia. Do you remember that movie? Is that a movie that other people know about? I feel like I found it in like a corner of like a video store because I'm, you know, a millennial. So back in my my day back 70 years ago when I was a kid we had video stores you guys times were tough we had to go to a store and rent videos if we wanted to watch a movie okay we couldn't just go online and find whatever fucking movie we wanted if we wanted to watch a movie you had to like go to the store and like rent it or buy it or something it was really tough no actually it was really fun it was really fun to do that I loved going to the video store that's how I got super into horror because I used to sneak over into the horror section like once we got old ish enough my mom would let me and my brother like split up and go look for a movie and I would sneak into the horror section and like look at all the, the covers and just see like horrifying imagery <laughs> and I would just be like whoa cool whoa I wonder what that's about and I'd like read the back and stuff and I felt like I was like get, getting something from that I don't know what but it's why I'm this way anyway I think I found I feel like it was it's about the puppy's name is Napoleon I remember that it might just be called Napoleon it's probably not called Napoleon it probably it might be actually I don't know anyway he goes to Australia he like gets in a balloon situation. <laughs> he gets into a basket. For some reason, there was like a basket with balloons in his vicinity and he's like a puppy. He was like a golden retriever puppy. Does anybody know this movie? And he like goes into the basket and then he like floats away. <laughs> 
in it. First mistake of the owners was putting a basket with a bunch of balloons around puppies. I don't know, like, what were you thinking, people? And like, why did you have the basket? What were you planning on doing with that? I don't know. Anyway, he like floats off to Australia and he goes into the bush and stuff and he's got to like meet all these Australian animals. Like he meets like a kangaroo and like dingoes and there's like a wombat, probably an akinda at one point, little blue penguins, I think, a frilled lizard. Um, Many of these might not make an appearance. I'm just like naming Australian animals, I think at this point. A kookaburra, I'm sure. Maybe a magpie. You know what? I feel like he does meet a tawny frog mouth. That's my favorite bird. He's got a, a hopefully there's a tawny frog mouth in that movie because I love that that bird. And I just have a f- weird memory of a tawny frog mouth like yelling at someone in a movie. <laughs> And hopefully that's the only movie where that could have possibly happened. Anyway, what? A, why am why am I doing this? All that to say that Croakling's currently in the Napoleon basket, floating away to Australia with a sunflower. So be nice to him when he gets there, please. He's traveled a long way. Um, Echo got his guitar. Shout out to the person who sent me this guitar finally. I love you so much. He's got his guitar. Look at him. He's so cool. He's in a band. There's Envenomate and I love Envenomate. Don't get me wrong, but I just think I'm going to trade him. I think I am. He's been training stats. He's got pretty good starter stats. I think he's got like 320 HSD. You don't need to know what that means. (laughs) I promise. Um, It's just like a trading thing. It means like his his health and his strength and defense like added up and he's level like 84 or something and he's a real word very hissy so i feel like he'll trade pretty good the other day he got shortlisted for a year two pet i know i'm probably not saying anything that means anything to most people but if you know what that means you know that that's a significant thing you know i didn't get picked but i got shortlisted and like the other ones on the shortlist were like were like tier six ucs like oh i don't know i don't know i was i feel like that's a little if anything i wasn't expecting that but that's that's awesome. So I might trade him for something eventually, but it has to be the right thing because I really do like him. I just don't think he's a permie. I don't know why. All these girlies, these bitches, they're staying around. As you remember, we have Zixie here. She's the alien princess and alien Aisha. And she's kind of just like a socialite alien princess girl. She's like a wealthy, like spoiled girl with a very optimistic, bright, sunny outlook because she's never had any problems. And I know I told you about her and Sebastian last time, but I added something to their story because you know how like he is just a hardened like soldier. He's like a a star. He's like in Star Wars, not the movie, but like the actual act of being in a war in space. (laughs) You know, like he's been in wars in space where he like, he drives like the spaceship. He's a captain of the spaceship, you know? He like drives it and like, pew, pew, pew. And like the stuff comes out, like lasers or whatever. And they're in like a battle in the galaxy, you know? That's his thing. And he's like just a hardened like war veteran. And he's from a planet that's like needed to be at war a lot, I guess, you know? So he's got like a tragic backstory, if you will. He's a sad boy. And he like, you know, tries to like get away from that life and do something else. And because he has like this huge like past of being like a decorated war veteran and he's like, you know, really strong and stuff. I don't know. (laughs) He gets hired to be Zixie's bodyguard. That's right. That's how they meet. You know, that's how the worlds collide. Cause I was like, well, how do they meet? You know, he's her bodyguard. And so he's like, just so serious. And she's always just like, you know, trying to get him him to like lo- loosen up and like lighten up and then eventually you know they they like start because they spend so much time together and stuff you know and for some reason Zixie's life has become more dangerous and maybe she's got like a stalker or something is this the plot of the bodyguard starring Whitney Houston and Kevin Costner you know what I mean though it's like she just needs a bodyguard for whatever reason and he's got to like put his life on the line for her but he would he would kill anybody who like tried to hurt her because she's like the first like positive sunshine that he's ever had had in his life you know he like just has a very tragic backstory he comes from like a very war-torn place and that whole thing you know so his parents are probably dead you know stuff like that (laughs) and then I'm so glad that you guys love my gay vampire boys because I do too I really held back last time but you know what fine I'll talk more about them Thank you. 
I found the perfect like picture that describes them on Twitter. Actually, I need to draw them in this situation. But it's like this one where this one person's like, I hate you. And the other person's like, you want to kiss me so bad. <laughs> it's totally that. And Rylan's the like one that's like, you want to kiss me so bad. And then Victor just hates him, but like he loves him. You know what I mean? You know, when that happens, how that happens. And for, again, just as a refresher, Ryland is like a pure blood, like thousand year old vampire, like born and raised a vampire. He's from like vampire nobility, that whole thing. And then Victor is a vampire hunter coming from a long line of other vampire hunters, but he got turned into a vampire. Uh oh, <laughs> not good. Victor, what are you going to do? Hunt yourself as a vampire hunter? Like, what are you going to do? It happens. You know, if you're a vampire hunter, yeah, that's a risk. That's an occupational hazard for sure. That's like the best case scenario if you get attacked by a vampire, you know, because I'm sure you die a lot. In fact, his dad, who he was really close with, and he like taught him how to be a vampire hunter and like instilled just like this hatred of vampires into him. He died from vampires. He got killed by vampires. So there's a new pet here and his name is Vicious and he's a Dargan walkie, but I feel like he looks like a vampire because he is a vampire. And this is a good place to start their whole story. I'm going to tell you everything because you for are forcing me to, you know, you guys waterboarded this out of me. So that's why I'm telling it to you. So Vicious is a bad vampire. He's a very bad vampire. And he is one of the vampires kind of like Ryland. And he has been rolling in this group, in this like gang, in this herd. <laughs> what do you call a group of vampires? Like a flock, like a pack, a pack of vampires. I don't know, like a pack of vampires. <laughs> He's been kind of rolling in this pack for a couple hundred years. Vicious is the leader and there's a couple other vampires. Like it's a, it's a sturdy group. You know, it's kind of like the Lost Boys, only there's more Lost Boys in the group. So Vicious is the leader and he's a little bit older than Ryland. He's a couple hundred years older than Ryland. And him and Ryland are, are friends like they were really 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 close friends for like a long time but the thing with vampires is that they have like no moral compass a lot of them because they have no sense of mortality so like life and death is just a game to them and being alive for so long they start to get bored and they start to just want to like change up their lives and stuff I don't know so basically even though Vicious and Ryland were really close for a long time Ryland has always been kind of like the second fiddle like second in command so he decides he's going to try to overthrow and this is kind of after after he loses some respect for Vicious because, oh, you guys, this story is so good. <laughs> I'm not even at the good part yet. I love this. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm like fucking fangirling about my own Neopet OCs. It's only going to get worse. So a little bit before Rylan decides he's going to try to overthrow Vicious, Vicious and the gang, the herd, <laughs> the vampire squad, they have a confrontation with a very famous, powerful vampire hunter who has been hunting them for a long time, right? And, you know, they've always wanted to take him out, but the way that Vicious goes about it, it just doesn't sit right with Ryland. So basically how Vicious does this particular thing, you know, they have this confrontation and the vampire hunter, he's like a geller too. He's also a geller and he's there with his son who is kind of like his, you know, his apprentice or whatever. Like he's learning under him. He's just as good as him. If not, like he's, he's a really good vampire hunter too. He is, he's finally like gotten to the, cause he's been tracking this group of vampires for a long time. But this is their final, like f they're finally com confronting each other for the first time. So basically what happens is that this vampire hunter and his son, his protege son, they have this confrontation and vicious. The way that he goes about it is just, like so dirty and, and like it doesn't sit right with Ryland because he you know gets the upper hand on this vampire hunter father-son duo and then he you know gets his father down and he's like incapacitated and then right before he kills the the father he turns the son, Victor, into a vampire in front of his father. And he wants like his last memory to be his son, like turning into the very thing that they've always hated and have worked towards. So like he dies knowing that like his son is doomed to be a vampire. So he does that to Victor and then he kills like the vampire hunter dad. And I know that's really dark. <laughs> But that's what happens. I mean, I can't help it that that's just what happened. I'm just reporting the facts, the news, live from inside my brain. <laughs> Um, and so Ryland watches that from the shadows. Like Victor doesn't know that he's there, but he's like, oh my God, like that was a little too fucked up. Like, I don't like that. Cause they don't, 
because like turning another Neopet into a vampire is a very frowned upon thing and they don't do it often. And so the fact that Vicious like did that, like like wasted one of his like times where he turned somebody into a vampire just to hurt people, you know, he was like, that's fucked up. Like, I don't like that, you know? And so that's Victor. That's like his story. That's what happened to Victor. But then we go back to Ryland because he's, you know, he's, he's feeling some contempt for Vicious, rightfully so. And he's even talking to the other vampires vampires in the group and they kind of voice that they didn't really like the way that Vicious went about it either. So that kind of gives Ryland the confidence to say, you know, I'm going to overthrow him. And he challenges him to like this vampire fight and like whoever wins, like it's a vampire fight like kind of to the death, you know, and whoever wins gets to be the group leader or whatever. But then, you know, Vicious is much stronger than Ryland. So Vicious like totally fucks Ryland up to the point where he's like at the brink of death and him and the other vampires leave him for dead. And so Ryland's in the woods and he's like about to die or whatever. And then then this old elderly Psy Bunny lady who lives in the woods finds him. And she is like very old. She's like a hundred years old. And she kind of is like the local witch lady. She's not an actual witch, but like all the kids, the local kids like think she's a witch. You know that whole trope where they're like, oh, there's the witch's house. Let's like throw rocks at it. I dare you to throw a rock at it. You know, and she's just so isolated and everybody's scared of her because she's like eccentric. And she finds him and she brings him back to her little like cottage in the woods, in the box if you will. And she's like, he wakes up and he's just in this like nice bed in a cottage and she's like trying to nurse him back to health. She's just like really sweet. She's like, oh, I found you out in the woods. You really messed up, didn't you? I don't know. I don't want to ask, but it's clear that you're probably pretty embarrassed by what happened. <laughs> and she's just like so sweet to him and she's nursing him back to health. But there's obviously that thing there where like he's a vampire. <laughs> And she doesn't know that or does she? Because she's like making him soup and stuff and he like tries to pretend he's eating it, but he's not. And he's not getting any better. And finally she starts to bring him blood and he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and she's like, just drink it. And he's like, how did you know? Like, how did you know that I'm a vampire? And he's, and she's like, you've been laid up for a while. Like, obviously I can tell that when I started to realize that you're not eating, I was like, hmm. And I looked in your mouth and you have fangs. So like I was like oh okay so he's a vampire and he's like where are you getting the blood and she's like don't worry about it and he's like okay and he's like obviously so weak and clinging to life so he starts drinking it and it's just like a small amount but it's enough that it's helping him to heal and so while he's there him and the old lady I don't have a name for her yet I need to name this poor woman they start to like have a bond of course and she's just such a you know those old ladies that'll just be friends with anybody and they'll talk to anybody she's like that and she's telling him about her life and how like all the things that she's done and then since Ryland's like 600 years old he's able to like kind of have some common ground with her where he's like oh yeah I remember 100 years ago that was fun back in that day like and she's able to be like yeah you remember that and so it's like she has someone to talk to that remembers like her her days like her like back when she was little and back when she was a teenager and, and Ryland's able to be like oh yeah that was a fun time like that era and they have like a bunch of weeks where they're just they're like companionship for each other and it's obvious that this old woman has been so so lonely for so long she finally has this companionship and that's kind of why she took him in and even though he's a vampire she's like kind of desperate for companionship so she just takes him in and like pours all of this like love that she hasn't been able to give for so long to into him like caring for him and nursing him back to health she keeps like giving him blood here and there and he's like where are you getting it and she's like don't worry about it and they just talk like all day you know in the garden like as he gets stronger she just tells him her her whole life story and he tells her his whole life story of like 600 years and it's like the first time he's able to like lay out his life and like talk about like his life and he kind of just has this like awakening of like wow like I've done all these things and what have I actually done and like what is life like what like I almost died and now I'm here and like this is crazy it's like very eye-opening for him and it just does a 180 on his whole brain just getting to know this mortal um neopet because <laughs> we're still talking about neopet Oh my God. And then finally, um, you know, it's been a couple weeks and you find out this is kind of dark, but <laughs> it's a vampire story. So whatever. I mean, you got to know where the blood's coming from, right? Uh, it's her blood because she's dying. Actually, she has like terminal neo disease like of some sort and she's dying and she has been so thankful for his companionship in her last 
few weeks. Like she's been able to like have a friend and talk to somebody about her whole life and reflect on her life as she's dying. And so she's been giving him her blood, like just enough that she's able to like, she's old and frail, so she can't give him a lot. And so because he hasn't had a lot to, to eat, he hasn't really been able to heal much. He's still super weak. Like the whole few weeks that they've been hanging out, he's been like kind of like not able to walk and stuff. And like, he's just kind of been like laying around and that's kind of why she's been able to talk his ear off and stuff is because he depends on her. And so he needs to like drink a lot of blood in order to get better. And so she's like, Ryland, like I've decided, you know, you're, you've given me the greatest gift I can ever ask for in your companionship. And he's like, what are you talking about? You saved my life. Like I am in debt to you. What are you talking about? Like, and he like loves her. Like this is the first time he's ever felt any emotions for anyone. He just like would die for her, but she wants to die for him. So she's like, I want you as my dying wish to just drink all my blood. And that's how I want to go out because I want to give you that, that gift. And I, cause knowing that you're going to be immortal and that you're a vampire and that you're going to live for like thousands and thousands of years, if not forever, that gives me some comfort in my dying days of knowing that like, you're going to, like, I get to kind of be immortal through you. Like you, you're always going to remember me. And I gave you this like light, these life lessons. And all I ask is that you lead a good life, you know, for a thousand years, for 5,000 years, however long you're here do good while you're here for the rest of your time. Make the world a better place as be as good as you can. I know that, you know, being a vampire is hard and you have to drink blood and stuff, but do as much good as you can for the rest of the time that I'm giving you now. He's like, no, I can't, you know, I don't want to do this. And she's like, you know, you have to. And like, I want you to. And this is just me asking you for one thing after I've given you all that. And so if you feel like you're in my debt, then this is what you can do for me. <laughs> me. Why did I think of this? Anyway, so he has to like, you know, drink her blood until she dies. But it's like f happy for her in a way because she, I don't know, she just like was really lonely and she got to have like kind of this last thing that she got to do after she had been kind of just isolated for so long. And so obviously that has a profound impact on Ryland to the point where he's just like a totally different, you know, vampire. He doesn't want anything to do with like Vicious or the gang or anything like that. He wants to live a good life. And so he starts to kind of go through the, the world and try to figure out his place in it. But then he realizes that Victor is tracking him. Ryland is trying to take out bad people and bad vampires and stuff. He's doing his own like vigilante Dexter work. And that's where, where he's getting his blood. He's like, I don't know. He's just trying to take out bad Neopets and stuff to get blood and to also make the world a better place. Cause he thinks that that's how to do that, you know? So he's doing all that, but then he slowly starts to realize that Victor is tracking him. And at first he thinks it's because Victor knows that he's a part of the gang that killed his father. Cause he recognizes Victor. But soon once him and Victor have that confrontation at one point where he's just like, okay, dude, what are you doing? Why are you following me? And Victor's like, you knew I was following you? Shit. You know, because Victor's, he's trying to adapt to a world without his father and he's very angry. And Ryland's like, oh, it's him, you know, is he okay? And he realizes that he's like following him. And since Ryland's like this new nice guy, he's like, hey, like I get that you're trying to kill me, but you're not very good at it. So do you want me to teach you how to be better at like tracking vampires? And Victor hates Ryland so much and he hates this like that he said that he's not a good vampire hunter or whatever. He's like, what? How? And he's like, the audacity of like this vampire to tell him that he, like, do you want me to teach you how to hunt vampires? He's like, uh, no, are you crazy? But he's also like a vampire. So, you know, he, he can't just act like he's a vampire hunter anymore because he's a vampire. So he needs to know how to be a vampire. He needs somebody to teach him how to be a vampire. His dad taught him how to be a vampire hunter, but nobody's been there to teach him how to be a vampire. So that's where Ryland comes in and he teaches Victor how to be a vampire, but also he lets Victor know that he's been hunting vampires lately too too and that they can work together and so it takes a long time and Victor's just angry he's so dramatic he's so angry and he's just he's he's a type that's like you know like Ryland ends up being like just that cocky cool like he's always got his like hands behind his head and he's like lounging around and he just like knows he's hot and he's like goofy and he's always in like a silly mood <laughs> And he's always making fun of Victor because Victor is like a sad boy and he's like so dramatic. Like he's always like, I am the darkness. Like I'm a demon. Like I am the one who the sun has turned its back 
on and I am a bloodthirsty monster. I can't even look at myself. Good thing I don't have a reflection because if I did, I couldn't even bear to look at it. Like he's so fucking dramatic about the vampire thing for good reason. Like he's obviously going through something with the whole thing that happened to him. And so he's very dramatic, but Rylan's kind of his foil in that sense where he's like, oh my God, you're being so dramatic. But in a way it kind of helps him because he would be just consumed by his own grief and his own misery if he didn't have Ryland. So for a while, they have this dynamic that Victor doesn't want to admit is really helpful to him, especially because he still hates vampires. He hates himself and he hates Ryland. Or does he? You know, like he starts to obviously grow to love Ryland, but he hates that he loves him. And he, he, he has this like this this mentality where he like hates him first. And he's like, I hate vampires. I hate you. Like get away from me. But he loves him, you know? And so they have this little thing. And for a while things are good because they go around together and they're hunting bad vampires and stuff and they're growing closer. But every once in a while, like Victor will have a thing where he's like, I should just kill Ryland. Like I've gotten all I need from him. And now I should just stake him because he's a dirty vampire like all of them. But then he like just can't. And Ryland always knows that like that's a possibility. So sometimes Ryland and just like pretends to be asleep and Victor's like looming over him with the with the stake and he's like I just have to do it like he's put the spell on you and you have to just stake him so you can break that spell because you're starting to like this vampire and you are not allowed to like vampires you can't like any vampires so you just need to get rid of this one he's taught you enough blah 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 and then Ryland will just like open one eye and be like are you gonna do it or not dude like holy shit you're just standing there having a soliloquy like what you're so dramatic and Victor's like have you been awake the whole time what the fuck they're just so cute I don't know. But then, okay, so they get really, really close, right? But this whole time, Rylan's been hiding something from Victor. Uh Uh-oh. And it's that he was a part of the group that was led by Vicious. And, you know, that's that's Victor's, like, number one target, obviously, because that's who killed his his father. And he doesn't know that Rylan was a part of that group. Like, he didn't see Rylan. Like, Rylan was, like, in the shadows or whatever. And so Victor does not know that Rylan, like, knows Vicious or, like, was a part of that or knows what happened to his father or anything like that and Ryland like initially didn't want to tell him just because like obviously but then he started to get to a point where he's like I should tell him but then he felt like it's too late like I should have told him in the beginning it's weird now like I don't know like he just can't find a good time to tell him that he knows about that and like he was there but he thought it was wrong and so he's kind of have he has this like looming like secret that he feels bad about he feels especially bad about it because like at one point like when they get really close like they're around a fire you know and Victor finally like breaks down and tells Ryland what happened to his father and how he became a vampire. And Ryland just has to sit there and act like he's never heard this story before, but he's like hearing it from Victor's perspective for the first time and it's like killing him. And then not long after that, like this is where they like, you know, they like hug and they kiss and stuff. And like, that's like a really nice moment for them. But Ryland has that guilt eating away at him. And then not long after that, you know, they have an encounter with Vicious and then Vicious is like, oh, it's nice to see you guys working together after what happened, you know, it's funny because Ryland was there that night and watched that happen to you. It's interesting now that like you're on the you're on the opposite side that you were that night, you know, and Victor's like, what? He's like, you traitor, you betrayed me, you lied to me. And he is so hurt by that, obviously. And Ryland's like, no, 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 it's not like that. Like, I'm sorry, I didn't know when to tell you. Like, I should have told you, you know, it's like that whole thing where he can't really explain, especially because they're like in a battle moment thing. So I don't know. I think that like maybe that whole thing happens and Vicious uses that as a chance to just kind of escape and then the two of them go their separate ways. I can't believe I'm like I'm still talking. (laughs) When will I stop? This is like a full-length feature film and uh, yeah Victor leaves and is like I never want to see you again and if you know what's good for you like I should kill you right now but maybe something happens where he like gets hurt or something. He like can't kill him at that moment. But either way, they go their separate ways and Victor's like, I am going to kill you, Ryland. Like I'm gonna hunt you and kill you until I find you. And so then the whole arc (laughs) just starts. This is like a fucking thousand episode long anime. (laughs) The arc where they're separate starts. (laughs) I promise I'm almost done. And you know, Ryland's just trying to look for Victor and it's hurting him because he always knew when Victor was around, he always knew when Victor was hunting him, but now he doesn't because Victor's gotten so good because of all the things that Ryland has taught him. So now he can't find Victor and he knows that Victor is hunting him, you know? And so he's like, I just want to be able to talk to him, but he might just kill me before I even get to say anything. And Victor's like training and he's hunting him and he's like going to kill him. And then obviously there's got to be like a confrontation. (laughs) 
between them where like he's he finally like gets the jump on Ryland and he's like about to kill him and Ryland's not fighting back and he's like sure that's fine you know I hurt you and I did I you know, I, I was supposed to live a good life. I promised someone that I would live a good life and I didn't. I should have told you the truth. And uh, and so, yeah, you can just take me out. You know, and he's like, what? Like, I can't just like kill you when you're not fighting back. What the hell? And then, you know, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't really have the rest written, but like, you know, <laughs> I need to just shut up. So anyway, that's them. <laughs> and now, I don't know. Um, I need to like write, I need to like write it. It's not like I can do it for the Neopian times though. You know how there's like comics for the Neopian Times? Yeah, no, that's not gonna be something that gets into the Neopian Times. It's a little, a little dark for that, but I don't know. Like, where's where are we writing the, the Neopets fanfics? Is there a Neopets fanfic <laughs> like thing on AO3? I haven't looked. Just kidding, I totally have looked. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, um, I gotta shut the hell up. I have to shut up right now. That's Vicland. That's their ship name, right? Should that be their ship name? I don't know. Yeah, that's them. That's all I got. That's all I got. <laughs> that's all I got so far. It's only like two hours of a story. Negative comments only because when you give me positive comments, it just makes me talk about them more. We don't want that. <laughs> okay, so enough with these two who ruined my life. Oh, but I do need to show you. So like Victor has like a knife now. Okay, Victor. <laughs> What is that gonna do? Where's your steak, buddy? But you know what? It shows growth, cause like he's a vampire hunter, but like he kind of like put down the steak. Like that's not really his identity anymore, you know? I mean, he still is a vampire hunter. That's like a majority of what they do actually is hunt vampires. But the knife is just, you know, it just looks cool. <laughs> But I gave him a Meowclops and I named him Zero because it's like after his, like, you know, it's not totally, obviously you just heard the story. So, you know, it's not 100% Zero Kiryu. But, you know, he's inspired a little bit by that. Just like a guy who was a vampire hunter and then, and he hates vampires and then, oops, whoopsie, you accidentally got turned into one. Are you sad? <laughs> Are you a sad vampire boy now? A little edgy maybe? Oh, poor thing. Anyway, I need to stop. Yeah, so that's all the pets now. Um, so Envenomate is up on the table on the chopping block and then so is Rex. I feel bad, but you know, I just, he's, he's not easy to customize like I, like I had hoped. And I just, you know, I, I think about my life without these guys and Rex is just one that I think I could move so that I can have a Moroccan killer. So I might move Rex. I might be willing to trade him for the right, the right thing, but we'll see. As much as I love him, like I literally, he used to, when I got him, I think he was like a skunk loop or something. And I saved all my pennies up for a, a Lutari transmogrification potion at like the height of their inflation. Like they were so expensive when I did that. I wanted a mutant Lutari so bad because he's like a big guy, you know, and I just love him so much. But unfortunately, I just, I don't know. I just don't really have any, I don't know. I love him. I really do. I just, he's kind of the one that I'm like willing to part ways with. So I feel bad, but I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Anyway, I really have to do my dailies. Holy shit. I feel like I have the worst Neopets luck. You know, I feel slightly richer. Let's see how rich daddy Colts in. You know, the king, the king, the ghost king. You have the power to give people th millions. What did I make? 30 Neo points? What was that? Cool. Thanks. Yeah, no, thanks. That's great. In what environment can you find Vandegeier? What are you talking about? I don't know. I don't know. Mountains? I'm not gonna guess. I just gotta go to Jelly Neo. Yeah, so just so you know, this is where you come to get the daily puzzle. Mountains, that was my, that was gonna be my guess. Yeah, cause I mean, it's obvious. Like what are they in the ocean? No. Anyway, um, yeah, I just feel like I have bad Neo luck. You know, like even, you know, the fairy festival, I'm never gonna be over that. Not getting anything from the capsules. I just feel like everyone else did. You know, like I never get anything good from this. I have friends who have gotten like coins that are worth so much. What is this worth? Two Neo points probably, two or three, maybe three. I bet it's worth three Neo points probably. Yeah, 300, okay, not three, but not not that much. Um, yeah, I just feel like I never get like good stuff happen to me. I don't know, like one time I got a pretty, I got like a Yusuke Khan gift bag from this guy from the Magic Rondo plushie. Detransmogrifer toy, what is that? What the hell is that? What is that? The fuck is a detransmographer toy? What is that? Like, what is that actually? What the hell? What is this? 
I just don't know what that is. Oh, 27 Neo points. Don't spend it all in one place. Okay, uh, anyway, yeah, let's just put this in my coin album. Oh, I already have this coin. Oh, okay, all right, well, <laughs> then let me just like throw it out the window then, you know? Let me just eat it, I guess, because like, you know. Um, yeah, I just don't really have great Neo. Like, I've never gotten anything on the fruit machine ever. Yeah, nothing. A whole lot of nothing. Just in time for the video. Okay, listen, I just still don't know if I should roll again because I'm already a couple days into this, but the sleep ray, right? Like it's a great weapon. It really is a good weapon. It is, you know, like everything's going down in price. It's amazing. I mean, like a good weapon's going to be great. Like it's still not, you know, under a million. So that's not bad. But like, do I want to just re-roll and try to get something that I'm going to actually like use? How much are these going for? Like how much? Three million a CAD, 25 million, honey, um, wake the fuck up, 2.5 million, what? 2 million, okay, so it looks like it's going for like 2.5 million, and probably by this next week, it's gonna be like 2 million, maybe, but you know what, whatever, I'm already two days in, let's just get it, and then the next one, because I really want, you know, like a Blobikins, I really want a croc. Hopefully I get something good for my next one. Cause like the jelly egg, like wasn't actually, I mean, at the time I was like, holy shit, that's a jelly egg. Like that at the time is something that like was worth a lot. Y'all, <laughs> this is embarrassing to admit. Like I sold that jelly egg for like a million Neo points, maybe even less. Now I think they're going for like 300,000. Oh, it's crazy. But I've heard that they're going to refresh the prize pool too, which I think is going to be awesome. So like, I think they're going to have this prize pool for a little while and then they're going to refresh it and do a new prize pool, which is great because that means not everybody's going to get everything and there's still going to be a demand for things that we haven't gotten like if i don't get a blobkins i'm gonna buy one. Oh, what did i find <sighs> Okay, thank you. No, it's fine. It's better than nothing. It's just sometimes you get like 2,000 Neo points and like a good item, but you know, that's what I get. It's fine. Oh no, 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 it's totally fine. No, it's fine. Yeah, um, I don't know. I just, I just think that like, yeah, especially if they're like refreshing the prize pool, that should be helpful. That should be really helpful. Okay, so that was for my quest thing check my stocks. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. A hundred, a hundred. I'll sell. I'll sell at that point for sure. That's awesome. See, it takes a while for that to happen, but when it does, it's cool. And then I'll buy some. So this is what you do for the stocks. Um, not that I, it took me so long to understand this, but you go and you find the 15. 15 is the lowest you can buy for, and you should only buy at 15. Like don't buy at 16, just buy at 15. I don't know what 15 means, by the way. I don't know what any of this shit means. And then you, you, you the most you can buy is a thousand. So I just buy a thousand of whatever's selling at 15. And then you just wait till it goes up past, I think like 80% is generally where people say like at the lowest you'd sell. So like if I sold here, I would make 5,000 Neo points. I don't know. I hate numbers. I hate math. I don't, I'm just gonna stop because it's, it's confusing. I know it's confusing. Nothing. A whole lot of nothing there. Um, okay. Let's, uh, I have to make sure. Yeah. Let's, let's get my pets training real quick before I can't use the shop wizard. So always training Mosin. Yeah. I don't know about that sleep ray. I guess I'm just going to go for it. We'll see what I can get from it. I don't know. The sleep ray used to be a real, I think it used to be like worth 50 million or something. It's a really good weapon. It's like a freeze weapon. So those are always in demand from what I've heard. And like when the whole, um, plot happens, if there's like a battle dome aspect to that, then people are probably going to want to have good items. So I might want to hold on to it. But then again, things just continue to go down more and more and more. So maybe I should just sell it. I don't know. I don't know what I should do. What would you do? Let me know. Like, would you re-roll on that? Because it's a battle dome item. It's like a really good battle dome item. I don't know. Battle dome items are always good. You know? Oh, let's do the, the lab ray, the pet pet lab ray. I don't have a labby right now. What am I even zapping? What am I zapping? Do I have anything to zap? I don't really have anything to zap, actually. Hmm. What am I gonna zap? Hmm. I actually don't have anything to zap. Let's just zap this, I guess. This purple meat bit. Shit. Fuck. Why did I do that? You dumb bitch. Fuck. You're just cute the first time when you get an avatar from it, but then after that, why the hell did I guess because I didn't have anything to zap and I felt like I had to zap something. Oh, did I finally sell my plushie? Yeah, I had a plushy male clops in there. I finally sold. Cool, thank you. I'll be taking that. Damn it. I guess I have something to zap again. The purple meat bit was cute, but whatever. It's not like 
the end of the world. I really want to have at least one thing to zap where like it could possibly be like a, oh wait, Velvet doesn't have a pet pet and neither does Vicious. So I need to find them both pet pets. Trotter doesn't have a, Trotter doesn't have a pet pet? Since when? Ugh. I gotta get some people pet pets, you guys. Holy shit, maybe today is when we go out and look. Yeah, Rex doesn't have a pet pet. And I mean, Rex probably isn't sticking around, but oh, look at this Moroccan snow bunny that I got for Caliu. She's like a little like sea hare nudibranch. So cute. Zixie's got the glowing baby space fungus. You have, okay, yeah, a silver do doggle fox thing. You've got Orlando. You have a Bython. Oh my God, look at the Gremble. So cute, right? I recently got this guy. He's so cute. He's so cute, right? Doesn't he look like Robert Smith from The Cure a little bit? <laughs> the Gremble. His name is Shadow. He's so cute. And then his is Baby Bug, the Poppet. I don't want to, I don't want to zap him. He's too cute. Corvo, I'm thinking about taking Sophie out and giving him a fairy slorg since he has one on his head and that would be cute. Pickle's got Cretan, the mutant Chuchuana, which I think is perfect, actually. I don't think that that needs to change. Re Upholster's got Felt, the plushy buzzer. Sebastian's got Zeno, the baby space fungus. He used to have like a robot guy, but I got him the, the, this like alien, as an alien by Ridley Scott themed stuff from the Haunted Mansion thing at Halloween. And then um, there's actually like a face hugger space fungus that you can get too, but I didn't want to cover up his beautiful face, but he's got like this Nostromo, like Ripley space suit thing on this astronaut suit and that's over his alien Aisha suit, I think. So I wanted to give him a space fungus and his name is Zeno after Xenomorph, obviously. Quite a few of you actually need pet pets. Which pet pet did I even zap? Like whose pet pet did I zap? Was it Banksy's? Yeah, pet pet of doom. Shut up. Get, get over here. Yeah, let's do pet pet shit. We gotta get everybody's pet pet squared away. Hey, what's up? It's been like a week at least since I recorded that last portion. So um, we're gonna try to find some pet pets for a couple of these pet petless souls here that I just have facing the world alone. But in the time since we last talked, AKA like, two seconds ago since it's all in one video. Neopet's birthday happened. <laughs> and a few of you asked me if I was gonna make a video about that because, you know, it was just Neopet's birthday. They always do something. But most notably, there was a live stream that we all tuned into. Y'all saw me fighting for my life in those comments. <laughs> they need to turn on slow mode because I swear to God, like comments are going too fast and I need Dom to see that he needs to make a Lord Cast movie. What a crazy live stream though, right? So we'll talk about that while we look for some pet pets because most notably um so Banksy has this pirate fleshy again because that's the one we zapped into dust last time I think we're gonna keep zapping him you know we need a few that we're gonna zap look at this thing Ow! so I put Rexed on one of my side accounts because I needed I just needed one of these I don't think I'm gonna keep it but this is what they came out with on their birthday and I don't think they usually do that did they do that last year they released a new pet color for their birthday and it's the toy poogle now I'm a poogle lover I love all poogles I feel like a lot y'all didn't love poogles and we're talking so much shit about the poogle until this moment shame on you shame on all of you i've always loved the poogle i always knew that they were going to come through with some awesome shit for the toy poogle beautiful so that's an eye dog and i had one of those as a millennial and i know a lot of you did too it was like a little doggy that you would plug your ipod into and it was like a speaker it wasn't a bluetooth speaker mind you we didn't have that back then you guys we were getting by day to day without bluetooth basically like this shit you would plug your ipod into it you guys remember ipods you remember we had to have like <laughs> It's just so funny to look back. We had to have a separate device to listen to music on. Isn't that crazy? Oh my God, we're going too fast. I just had to take both my iPod and my phone wherever I went. <laughs> And if I wanted to listen to music, I had to get my iPod out and listen to music on my iPod. Crazy. You would plug your iPod into the iDog and then it would dance to the music and then like the lights on its head would move with the music and it would also be a speaker, right? Like that was a thing that we needed. You know, we were like, please, I need this because I need to see a robot dog dancing to Helena by My Chemical Romance. Like, I, please, just I need it. Just don't ask. You know, I was like kind of a speaker, but I don't even think I was a good speaker. I think the main appeal of this product was genuinely just to see the robot dog dance. <laughs> we were just like so obsessed with robot dogs back in those days. Like we had the Poochie. Then there was another 
robot dog. What the fuck was that dog called? That wasn't the eye dog. That was something else. You guys remember that dog? Okay, sorry. We're doing this right now. I don't care. Whatever. This is how I do videos. I have to. I just have to do this, okay? If I don't do this, I'll die. So just let me do this. Anyway, here's the Poochie. And I remember seeing the commercial of this and thinking like it was going to solve all my problems. I was in like a weird age bracket where I saw this on TV and I was like, that's what I need. Like, that's what's wrong. I, exactly. Yes, that's what I need. If I get that, I'm going to get my shit together. This is it. Like, this is the missing piece to my puzzle. Like, this is going to cure my depression. It's going to give me something to live for. It's going to make me feel like an adult, like a part of like the world, honestly. Like, I just knew that if I got this robot dog, everything else would fall into place. It was just going to be such a huge part of my life that everything else would make sense. It would all fall around that. That's not what happened. In fact, I love, <laughs> I'm on like R slash nostalgia right now. This first comment is perfect. They were cute for five minutes, didn't really do much. No, they didn't really do much, did they? Yeah, no. So I had the Poochie and I think one of my cousins specifically had this thing. This was the Techno dog. I don't even remember what the fuck this thing was called. And I thought this was going to be way better than the Poochie. Once I got the Poochie, I was like, oh, I should have got the Techno because like the Poochie doesn't do much, but surely the Techno, like look at this thing. It's bigger. It's better. <laughs> I was like, well, the Poochie's like small. I just made so many excuses for this thing. I was like, well, it's legs are so short it's just can't do much this guy that's this is the dog that's walking with you on a leash jumping fetching everything this one to my knowledge was even worse honestly it did nothing like this shit the gears and stuff that doesn't work this is all plastic it would just go bam 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 the ears would move a little um that's about it this thing sucked i remember being very very underwhelmed there was like a meowchi and it was a cat and i don't think i had that one but someone maybe like an aunt or an uncle got me the bird there was like a bird one. What was that called? Oh my god, it was Chirpy G. He's flat. He was kind of cute and he came with like a corn. Yeah, why would why would he come with a corn? Like a piece of corn. Yeah, what the fuck was that? It can't be bargained with. It can't be reasoned with. It doesn't feel pity or remorse or fear. And it absolutely will not stop. Ever until you are dead. No, yeah, I did have the chirp. Somebody got me the chirpy and he came with a corn. And I just remember thinking that, you know, that's why my problems weren't solved is because I needed the bird too. He didn't do very much. He just beep, 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 bop, boop. And you just like put the corn in his mouth and he beep, beep, beep. And that's about it. Like that's all they would do. But we were just, for some reason, like marketed these like astronomical feats of engineering. Like we th I thought that this thing was gonna cure my whole life and put everything into perspective and just be like my little robot helper. The only robots who have never let me down, Furbies and E102 Gamma forever on God. But this bitch up here, I think like a cousin of mine had one. Listen, the the whole ticket to this bitch right here is that she had babies. So first of all, you're like, what is it? What the fuck is this thing? What even is this thing? And they're like, we aren't gonna tell you. I don't know, you don't know either, but what we can tell you, the selling point is that she's pregnant and about to give birth. <laughs> like, And you're like, what? Oh, I don't even know what the main one is. I don't even know what the big one is. Now you should tell me I'm gonna have two? Is it a litter? Is she gonna have a lot of babies or a little, like, is it a lay egg layer? I actually love this. Wait, I kind of want one. It's called a... A love love, huh? Wait, this is what I want for Christmas. Wait, I want her. Okay, so yeah, she would like be, um, she was with child when you would buy her, right? And so she's like an expectant mother. This is, yeah, uh huh. And you have like a surprise baby. That's kind of cute, actually, that that would happen. Cause like you basically buy her and she's like, you know, expecting. She's gravid, if you will. Cause like it, it does appear as though she's oviparous. She's a, an egg laying organism. Not sure what she is. I don't think, again, anyone had ever explained what the fuck this is like what I'm bringing into the world, what I'm like becoming a breeder. I, like now I'm a breeder of whatever the hell this thing is. <laughs> I'm like breeding these, I'm rearing them. I don't even know what it is, but okay. Yeah, and sometimes, listen, sometimes you buy one and it has two babies and you don't know. That's the thing. Like, I think it's like you buy her and you get either one egg or like if you're lucky, you get like twins or something. Look at these little babies. And then they would come out of the egg, these little fucks. And you just get this beautiful family that you get to care for. Wow, the 90s.
bodies. Who would thought of this? Who was like, you know what kids want these days? They want to be responsible for the breeding and rearing of unidentified animals. Anyway, I think I really want one of these actually. My husband told me to give him a list of stuff that I want for Christmas. Do you think he'll get me this? He probably won't. He probably think I'm kidding. No, I'm not kidding. I want a love love. I want a gravid love love. <laughs> And then I have to open it in front of like my in-laws. That's the thing. And I have to be like, oh, you got it, the love love, oh my God. <laughs> and they like are normies, you know? So what are, what are they gonna think? Who cares, right? He's not gonna get me a love love. I'm gonna have to, this is something I'm gonna have to do on my own, actually, unfortunately. I think I'm gonna have to get her on my, I love her, like the falsies. Why has she got these big long eyelashes? That's the thing, you know? Anyway, was I making a Neopets video? Sorry, uh, let's get back to that immediately. Hi, editing me here. I just wanted to add, like this is this substantial. I just went to go get a picture of the Meowchi just for the video real quick. And like, they're so cute. They're so cute. How did I not have one of these? Why did I get the stupid Lego dog and the bird with corn and not one of these? Look at the pink one. I want the pink one so bad with like the heart eyes. Anyway, I just really had to like honestly have an opinion on this because they have a Garfield one. Dude, what the fuck? We were sleeping so hard on the Meowchi. These are the best ones. I'm sure that they did flips, honestly. I don't even wanna ruin the illusion. No, honestly, I think that if I get that pink Meowchi, my whole entire life will get better. I think it will fix everything, actually. It actually took me a minute to figure out how I got there and like remember what I was talking about. Yeah, this is Suze's. And she's not a permie, I don't think. I just wanted one, just for like the thrill of it. Just for the, 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 the adrenaline rush, if you will. So Rex is on my side and Suze's is here, but I'm like kind of, you know, offering her up for trade and stuff. I don't know what I'm doing with her. I like that name too, I think it's cute, but I'm not gonna keep her, I don't think because I need my Moroccan Giller, which I still haven't gotten because I'm just not getting Fountain Fairy Quests and the Moroccan paintbrush has actually gone up in price because, oh my God, it's a good reason why. Look at the, ow, okay. The Moroccan Vandegeyer just came out for Vandegeyer Day and look at it. She's so beautiful. It's a sea angel, which is a type of, I think they're a nudibranch. I know they're a snail, they're like a sea snail, but oh, I just love it so much. It's so beautiful, like love the colors, I love the fins, I love everything about it. You know, a lot of us were like, wouldn't the Moroccan Vandegar be like a squid because it has a beak? Like that's a squid beak right there. But then you think about it and you're like, how like would that have worked? Like that would have been kind of horrifying, right? But then again, it, maybe it wouldn't have been. Like if you had like, and I'm pointing as if you guys can see me, but if you had like the big mantle and the big tentacles and stuff, that might've been kind of cool. But you know, to me, <laughs> like anybody else, like would you guys be interested in like a squid Neopet? I don't know why I asked that as if you guys wouldn't be because that's kind of cool, right? I think... Uh... I think we missed the chance to have a squid, but at the same time, I am very happy and not complaining at all with the sea angel. And in fact, like I kind of want one. Everybody kind of wants one right now. <laughs> so that's why the Moroccan paintbrush is really fucking expensive now, even more so than it was. So my hopes of getting a Moroccan Geller anytime soon are just dwindling, but that's okay. I am happy with this. So we got two new colors in the last week. Uh, and yeah, there was a birthday stream with some notable figures. First of all, shout out to Lori, the streamer that hosted it, you did great. Dom was there rocking the black Neopets V-neck and you know, I feel like he's getting more comfortable with being like a influencer, <laughs> you know? He's the CEO of Neopets now, by the way. Anthony, the artist, he's like one of the old, he's worked for Neopets forever. He's been drawing the Neopets art for so long and it was just so great to see him and his art. And I just wish all Anthony Connolly a fantastic, wonderful evening. Zach from Jelly Neo, who does like all the Battle Dome stuff and the Battlepedia stuff. Good job, great job, Zach. And then uh, Alice, actually. <laughs> and if you don't know what I'm talking about, just pretend you do. I don't, I don't have time. Wow, right? I mean, all of us just wow. Okay, so yeah, I'll go over it because I went to, this is Jelly Neo. So first of all, we got a rare item code for the 25 recipes for 25 years. If I don't sound excited, it's just because I'm not. <laughs> what a weird item this is, right? So we got, we all got like this free thing. It's just a book, right? But it's not readable and it's not wearable. It's not nothing. There's not, you. it's nothing. There's nothing. 
You can't do anything with it. Just put it in your gallery or your, your safety deposit box, I guess. I don't know. But thank you. Thanks. Yeah, that's special. That's nice. Uh, then, yeah, we got this roadmap. The NCUC pets are coming in a unique way. A mysterious ray will appear, will be appearing soon. What? A ray? What are you talking about? What? A ray? Oh my God. Okay. So that's awesome. So then, yeah, some of the questions, uh, quest log items, like, do they get rotated? Yes. They're going to get rotated. That was confirmed. That's basically cool. Awesome. Where do you see Neopets in five years? Bigger, better, awesome, cool, great. I'm glad that they're like in it for the long haul. And then <laughs> would love to see a Neopets movie. So like the whole time in the live chat, I'm like, Lord, cast movie when? And then in my Discord server, we were like casting the, the fucking Neopets movie. Will there ever be an NC item that will allow us to rename our pet or username? Uh, I, no offense to anybody who asked that, but it just kind of seems like, whoa, that's a lot to ask, you know, like, cause we're just kind of asking at this point, can you make the game like playable actually? You know, I don't know. It feels like just like with the 40 pet slots too. that, you know, like, and I'm the first, like I would have 40 pets. Absolutely. I would have 40 pets. But when we were talking about more pet slots, I thought we were talking about like maybe bump it up to 25, you know, even 25 seems insane, but 40, y'all are asking for 40. I don't know. No, no offense. I, I get it. You know, we should be able to have as much as we want, maybe, pro probably. But what? 40 is crazy. 40 is a little insane, right? Isn't 40 a little much? I don't know. I don't know. Because then you just never run out, I guess. And you could have all your pets, all your trade fodder on your, on your main account. But that would be so much. Like the drop down list for like, what do you want to do with this item? Oh my God, you guys, that would be insane. That would be kind of insane, right? They talked a little bit about the bots and I guess, the, yeah, they've like frozen a lot of high profile cheater accounts, frozen a lot of IPs at the center of some bot circles. Hell yeah. But yeah, they acknowledge that like they also need to alter game mechanics and stop botting with like patches and stuff which sucks, but it is what it is and it, it's better that way, you know? And then, yeah, they were like, will we be seeing a new species anytime soon? There's a, yeah, it's, I don't care if we have a new species. Do you like, do we need a new species? That would be kind of cool. But like, would we even really appreciate them that much? Like, I feel like the Vandegaier came out and it took us years to, to come around to them, you know? And it's just like, it's hard for the wearables. Anthony came and slayed absolutely just ate and left no crumbs for anyone else. Your Neopets are now dying because there was no crumbs to be to be left. And that's it. That's it, right? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, they said they were going to be 25th anniversary limited edition plushies. Give me those right now. Really? Oh my god. Okay. So yeah, that was really cool. So now I wanted to just quickly... <laughs> we'll see about the quickly part, but I wanted to go find Trotter and Velvet some pet pets. We need to find them pet pets. Vicious has this fleshy, this pirate fleshy. I named him Horrible. Vicious is pretty horrible, so thought it worked. And then we're just, yeah, we're going to zap the fleshies, the pirate fleshies. So we've got two zappers that we're going to zap. And then we have two pets that we need to find a pet pet for. So I pulled up a couple different lists, actually. I don't know how I want to do this. I think I want to do it this way. Um, this is on neopetscheats.com. Not that I'm cheating. I'm not cheating. I swear. I have like a list on Jelly Neo of all of the pet pets, and it just seems a little overwhelming. There's so many, but this one seems fun because it's showing all the colors, I think. Think. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see how this works for a little while, I guess. I think for for like velvet, we need something plushy. So I'll go and look over at the plushies. And then for Trotter, maybe something plushy because she's like a toy, you know? So I don't really, I don't know. Oh, I want a snow goal so bad. That's what I fucking want is a snow call. How much are the snow calls going? Like 500 million probably, right? 500 million. I'll never own one in my life for as long as I live. Oh yeah. Hell yeah, baby. Oh, let's get one today. Yeah. Wow. And they dropped in price so much from 40 million to 28 million. Cool. Wow. No, I just want one so bad, but I'll never own one. And I just have to come to terms with that. Just have to come to grips with that. I mean, honestly, since the CADs are so cheap now, should we just, I keep Keep waiting to roll a cad because the first cad that I got on my side I gave to my friend who deserved it by the way who was waiting for a cad more than me harder than me oh it's only tw hmm, okay so maybe I do a cad thing because I've always wanted a cad so maybe I get a cad what are all the cad colors let's like look at all the colors a cad can be so the Halloween Kadoti is actually pretty stupid as it turns out the pink Kadoti is kind of cute 
Just the regular Kadoti, honestly, is a little bit of a sleigh. Wow. The Royal Kadoti is pretty cute. The Valentine Kadoti is so cute. But the Valentine Pet Pet paintbrush is kind of expensive, though. Oh my God, 18 million? What are you talking about? Holy shit. No, honestly, I feel like I want to go CAD with Trotter. Hmm. And then, like, let's just scroll right down to the plushies, honestly. We don't need to make it a big thing. I don't need to go through every single Pet Pet. But, like, you know, it's kind of fun to do that. It is kind of fun. The fairy Pet Pets can be really cute. The fairy Kadoti is cute. That might be cute. No, it's a little much. Oh my God, a plushy croc. Because crocs are affordable now too. Oh, the plushy Hassy is so cute too. Wait, the plushy Hassy is really cute. Oh, but the plushy croc is so cute though. Oh, the plushy Meekins is really cute. I love the plushy Sorg. And the plushy Termag. I love Termags. Oh, the plushy Yu Yu. That's kind of cute too. You know what? Oh, the plushy Baba is really cute too, actually. Yeah, Amanda, it doesn't always have to be a status symbol. Like sometimes you can just get something cheap. I love the plushy Hassy, actually. I wonder how much the Crocs are going for, just like out of curiosity, you know? Wow, the Croc. I never would have thought that I would see this, that I would live to see the day. It's just affordable, just like honestly affordable. Now I just want a bougie ass fucking pet pet. Cause now I want to look at the Sio Drakes too. Wouldn't it be cute to give Vicious a Sio Drake? He doesn't deserve that. Why would I do that? Cause I want a Sio Drake. <laughs> no way, what? Shut up. What? Are you serious? No way. Who am I going to give a Sio Drake to? Like right fucking now. Who's getting the Sio Drake? You know who's getting the Sio Drake is going to be actually Banksy. You're getting a Sio Drake, baby. You won. You won a Sio Drake in, a, in like a raffle. We're only going to be zapping Vicious's pet now. You're getting a Sio Drake right now. If they're really that much, if you're really telling me that I could get a Sio Drake like on the shop wizard right now, then yeah, yeah, then we're doing that. Please come up. What? No way. Yeah, we're getting a Sio Drake. So like somebody's getting a pet. It's not any of the ones that we planned. Give me that right now. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Wow, I have a Sio Drake. Like just randomly. I have a Sio Drake. Really? I have a Sio Drake. Okay, if you say so. Damn, Banksy, take this. What are we gonna name him? What should we name him, Banksy? You have a Sio Drake now, baby. He goes well with you. He does. He looks really good. Yeah, that looks great. Actually, I love that. What should we name him? Let's name him Malachi, like from Children of the Corn. You guys are high balling. Let's do the 2.5 million. Okay, so I went ahead and got a baby paintbrush uh, because even though they're asking 2.5, they might get other bids. And sometimes you have to bid a little higher to like outbid people who are bidding what they literally asked. I know that sounds awful, but people are fighting for their lives right now. And you can only bid 2 million at the trading post. So you need to bid like if it's, if somebody's asking for like something for like 4 million, then you need to bid like 2 million plus something worth 2 million or you need to set up a bunch of little trades or you need to neo mail people and like set up an auction which is like just really a nightmare for someone like me <laughs> so yeah I like it when they just ask for the rest in baby paintbrushes but then that only goes up like by 600,000 it's weird anyway uh hopefully we get that Kadoti and I can give it to Trutter and then maybe we'll paint it at some point thank you yay Everybody has a pet pet. And if they don't have a pet pet, they've got one in the works. So we'll give that to Miss Velvet. Yay. What are we gonna name her? What should we name her? So you have Malachi, the Sciodrake. I can't believe it. That's kind of insane. Velvet, what's like another type of material? Cause reupholstered her pet pet is a plushy buds named felt and she came with that name which is perfect chiffon that's kind of cute tweed imagine denim but she doesn't look denim yeah there's felt terry cloth corduroy corduroy's cute <gasps> corduroy yeah it's gonna be corduroy yeah mm -hmm. if anything velvet looks like she's made of corduroy but it's fine. I love corduroy. When I first started dating my husband, that was like 10 years ago, we were at Old Navy one time and I saw this pair of like, they were just like straight leg fitted. They weren't like skinny jeans, but they were like not baggy and they were maroon corduroy. And I remember I was like, if I can convince him to buy these and wear them, then I just will have him forever. And I was like, you should buy these and wear them. 
And he did. And he did. And that's how I knew I loved him. Cause I was like, if he's willing to like do that, that's like kind of a big step for a man who isn't like that invested in fashion, like to trust me on that, to get maroon corduroy pants from old Navy. That felt, that felt like a big step. And mind you, this was back in 2013. It was like a really bold move, honestly, on his part. And I just did it out of like, cause A, I thought they were really cute. And I was like, I kind of want like a boyfriend who would wear those. Anyway, that's corduroy and velvet is complete. Now I'm just waiting on my CAD. Could take a while, could take a long, long while actually, in fact. So we might not get that for this video, but I think I've done enough. Don't you think I've talked enough? I talked all about Rylan and Victor. I did my dailies and I even talked about the weird pregnant Furby knockoff that we had back in the 90s that I want and the robot dogs in honor of Suze's. So I think I'm done. Hi, um, you're never gonna believe this, but I'm actually not done. I just needed to show you that literally the next day, right before this is going up actually, I got a fountain fairy quest. This is Salt Paws, the Moroccan killer. I know, right? He's so beautiful. There he is. He does not have a pet pet at this moment. Mm, so we're gonna have to work on that. But yeah, that's my Moroccan killer. His name is salt paws because he's like a he's like a sea dog you know he's like in the sea and he's got paws so he's salt paws um and he's a moroccan giller did i mention that anyway yeah i got my fountain fairy quest from my cookie oh my god thank you queen oh she's so sweet for that thank you baby obviously we have trotter over here like wearing kadoti pajamas because she has her Kadoti that I haven't even named yet. Oh my God, what are we gonna name you? What are we gonna name you? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go over to the Kadotery and pick a name from, from there because they always have the best names over there. They're so cute. So today we have Destructo Cad, Dickens, Ziv, Pop-Tart, So Far So Bad, Luigi, Slimer, Gozer, Sneaker. Sneaker's kind of cute. Ninja, Q, Shira, Seymour, Elizabeth, I love it. Hermes, Serenity, Book, perfect. Love you. Book jumps in the air and lands with a thud. It's like that Webkins. <laughs> it's like that Webkins that you dip in milk and hit against the wall. <laughs> Okay, I think I'm done. Am I done? Am I finally done like torturing the people of the world? Yeah, I think I'm done. Okay, I'm gonna go. I just needed to show you salt paws and, and book. Bye.